ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to a beautiful Friday. Um, I took today off because I was supposed to go to the doctor. Thank you, sweetie. Mm -hmm. Um, and in the process of getting ready this morning and getting the dog's water and stuff, somebody put her big fat clobber and feet <laughs> onto our pump when she was turning the water on and off and did this. Yep, I did that damage like Godzilla. Let's see. She, I guess she stepped right here and it cracked the piece that screwed into here. But the stupidest so I've got to replace it. So that's what we're doing today. The saddest so part. We went to Home Depot, got it. Now we're going to get it all, uh, get it all fixed. It wasn't my fault. I blame it on Dave. But I think I've got to, I don't think I've got enough here to go in. So I'm going to have to cut it there and, um, Cut it there, run a new piece up. I got a new elbow, and I got this new piece so that I can put another another piece here and have plenty of space here to go into this. So let's get it done. All right, so the first step, I gotta put this into the metal flange here. So this is just a converter. It's one inch PVC converting to a three quarters of an inch um, pipe fitting, which the metal flange is a three quarters inch, but the pipes run in from the uh, aerator, um, which we have to have because of where we live, um, is one inch. So that's what this is. So the first thing you want to do before you screw this into the metal flange is make sure you've bought plumber's tape. And what this does is as this threads all the way through, that plumber's tape kind of helps fill the gaps and really kind of seal any, um, any air pockets or anything like that. Not air pockets, but like any possibilities of leaks. So you want to make sure you flant, uh, wrap this around and this isn't sticky or anything so you kind of have to be careful like when you're threading it you have to hold one end down and then press it down so that it sinks in and then go around and just kind of make sure you cover the hole all the way to the bottom and I usually go around it twice just to be on the safe side I got way beyond where I needed to and then you just kind of pop it Take your last remaining piece and kind of push it down. Um, now when you screw this in, you don't have to over tighten it. It should make a good seal with the plumber's tape and everything that's on there. You want to tighten it to where it just barely tightens. If you over tighten it, you'll break it. So you got to be careful. So don't over tighten these when you put it in. So. If I look here, I probably have enough if I cut it here to go in there, but I feel like it put too much pressure on this pipe here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and add the uh, add the new pieces, so that way it gets a little bit more. And then I'm gonna try and stabilize that elbow at the bottom there. Okay, so I went ahead and cut it down there lower, so you can see there's my elbow. So I've gotta cut this elbow off, because I gotta put a brand new one on there, and then um, put the couplings here to coupling back into the other piece of pipe put the new elbow on it put a new piece of pipe here and then that'll slide right into the um, adapter that I put on the pump itself so you got to make sure you've got when you're going for PVC you want to make sure you put proper cement glue um, look at the glue based on what you're going to be doing so the glue I got is it works okay in wet conditions so in the event that this pipe on the outside was a little bit moist um, it would still be okay. It would still seal properly, but my pump's not got a lot of pressure um, as far as like um, the type of glue. I don't need like an industrial glue. I just need a standard PVC cement to hold this together. So I went ahead and picked up a new jar because I was out. Uh, and this is red hot blue PVC pipe cement, uh, medium body, very fast dry and set, which is what I'm looking for because luckily the pump broke on the way out this morning so we didn't nobody's needed it um so we can uh i can fix it you know now i think i got all the pieces it's probably going to take me aside from talking to you guys it's probably going to take me 20 minutes to fix this little piece it's not that big a deal um i'm sharing this for the main reason that my grandfather taught me most of this stuff and so when he passed away you know like five or six years ago it's to that point, like, whenever I fixed something, I was like, 
hang on, let me call him and make sure. And I always had him come double check what I did to make sure I did it correctly. So this is for those people out there that don't have that person that can double check with them, um, that just wants the reassurance that they're doing what they're doing correctly. Like, I guess you could say like, that's my form of anxiety. Like I just recently replaced the, um, suction pump on the washing machine that sucks all the water out when it drains and uh like i i always worry like i bought the part and replaced i knew what i was doing but like my mind was like are you doing it correctly are you sure you bought the right part you know and i didn't have that person to pick up a phone and be like hey can you tell me i'm doing this correctly because you've been at this many many more years and i trust you so just my little step-by-step -step with you guys and that was my little random story so don't forget to don't forget to cement your pvc when you're putting your pipes together okay that's important because if you don't then the pressure from the water is going to push all the pipes and pieces apart and then you're gonna have water everywhere and you'll be out here fixing it probably at three o'clock in the morning so uh just because you got to get up and take a shower but anyway so you want to make sure you cement the outside of your pipe and the inside of your fixture so and it's just going to slide over like that. So I'm going to seam it here, seam it inside there, and then I'll seam it the other end of the pipe that's already attached, and then the inside, and then bloop, pop them together. Um, I'm going to cut this off first and go ahead and put the elbow on before I reattach it down there. That way I'm not slunched over. I get it all done real quick. Um, and then we bought a brand new pair of, they call them channel lock PVC cutters. You can do this with a hacksaw. It's really easy. Um, it takes maybe 10 more seconds to hacksaw through a piece of PVC. Uh, you can actually cut PVC with thread, but that's neither here nor there. But anyways, you just pop open and then you just set it on there and you just crank it until it cuts through. Um, but that's just an easy way. We picked up a new pair today while we were out because my old pair was my grandfather's. Um, and they stopped ratcheting because they were probably, oh God, they must have been... 25 years old you know he took such good care of all of his stuff that there's i've um ooh, see cutting through and it popped um there's probably tools up there that are 50 years old that are still in really good condition because he took care of them and um made sure that they were there for him about this is if your hacks on you can have a lean that see to cut it in angle and not realize it whereas this kind of gives you a flush cut because it only goes in one direction as long as you hold your channel lock uh, pieces level then you're not going to get a weird random angle cut but so this is trash uh, or you can sand off the edges so they're not sharp and give it to your kids as like a toy or I don't honestly know so I just made sure my pipes dry we're gonna crack this stuff open in the words of my grandfather work smarter not harder There we go. And it didn't hurt my hands or anything. See, sometimes the brain is the strongest muscle. Um, so it's like a blue color. And that's just kind of help you, that's kind of help you see where you're putting your uh, cement. So, but if you get this stuff on you, don't rub it anywhere. Um, as it, if it dries, you can kind of get it off. Um, but like paint thinner or gasoline uh, is something we've used out here a lot. Uh, as like a hand cleaner for stuff that doesn't come off like tree sap and crap Gasoline and paint thinner will eat right through that. Just make sure you wash your hands with soap um, before you do anything else because God forbid you light a fire afterwards, but whatever I'm just saying So let's get this in so pull it out let it drain off kind of swish it around so it You don't want it. You don't want it drippy drippy. You just want a, a good layer. So make sure that guy's not dripping goes inside your piece here make sure you don't go all the way through because you're going to do that on the other side you don't want to build up on both sides and it dry before you go to and then you just go around the lip there just enough for the brush because as you push these two pieces so your two glue pieces as you push them together the glue is going to mingle anyway so just want to push down all the way there's a little flange in here that the pvc will stop at so you're not gonna unless you're hitting it with a hammer you're not gonna run the risk of shoving it all the way through this thing so just keep that in mind as you're putting it together just push it to the flange but actually 
I almost got to the flange on this one, and you can already tell the glue has dried. So it's pretty fast acting glue. I like that. That's good stuff. So, and you'll see like it's got a little seal on it. It's pretty cool. Okay. Do the other side. I got a new purse. Hey, that's cute. Okay. It's got the lollipop, the owl on it. Yeah, it says how many looks does it take to get to the center. So, Allie had a milestone recently. We're not going to discuss that milestone. Yeah. We'll just call it a girl milestone. And so her aunts sent her a care package. Um, and it's cute. So she got this. It's a panda. So, is that a panda unicorn? Yes, it is. It's a panda unicorn <laughs> purse. Corn. And then it's got the Tootsie Pop owl. And it says, how many oh, looks it? does it take to... Yeah, that's from when we were a kid. When I was a kid. How What's it smell looks? like? Is it, it smells is like it? cough syrup. Oh. oh. Like, it's not like Tootsie it's Pop flavored? This. It smells, it smells like, like Robitussin. Oh, you got it in my nose. It smells like cherry flavored cough syrup. It does. It smells like cherry flavored Robitussin, which is a cough I syrup. love it. So, same reason. thing. Glue on both sides. And down. Hi, hey, puppies. Oh, right. get them out of here so they don't knock my glue over. Come on, puppies. All right, so I'm going to give this about 10 seconds, 15 seconds to kind of dry. And then I'll glue this piece and the other piece and slide it on. And then we got to do the gap in between. So I'll show you when I'm done. I'm going to stop rambling at you. And there it is back hole again um i did tighten this down before i put this in with a pair of pliers just to get a little bit more snug so just a heads up on that pine trees but i'm gonna let it it's been drying for about two minutes i'm gonna let it dry for another minute or two and then i'll um plug the breaker back in for it and if you do everything correctly you should hear the sounds of a running pump and no leaking water no leaking water, pump's plugged in, it's pushing water everywhere it needs to go, and that's the end of this little adventure. So, I don't know, we'll see. I actually built, if you notice, there's like uh, pallets around my pump, because we put it on like a piece of like eight foot by eight foot concrete, but I built pallets around it because I had a buddy of mine run over at the very edge. That piece that runs into the house, it goes a little bit past the um concrete which stops right there and i had a buddy run that over so i built this around it to keep it from getting destroyed because that wasn't fun having to fix that at like nine o'clock at night which i made him do it i'm not even gonna lie to you we don't know like, are you going to aunt bex's room let me throw it right. can you drop it right. Hold on. come here drop it come on Come here. You're such a pain in the butt. Hi, Wolfgar. Sister Tackle! Oh, now I'm not paying attention to you. Now you want me to throw it? You're such a butthead. You could have put it in my hand. Fire in the hole! <laughs> you missed it. More coordinated than that. Hi. He's biting her because I was playing with her. Fire in the hole. Don't Here, Freya. Hi, Freya. Hi. Hi. Hi, Freya. Hi. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm playing with the puppies. Now you want to play with me all of a sudden. You watch out. Yeah, she knows. She sees the way I, my body moves. Afraid of being this is Freya. Whoa. Oh my goodness, Ellie! You what butthead! Come here, buddy. What she did? Come here. That's that's Wolfgar. Uh, Freya is actually going to her forever home at the beginning of April. Uh, we had three, remember? We had Little Bear, and uh, he went to his home about a week or two ago. Come here, Wolfgar. He's distracted by all this. Hi. Hey, buddy. Hi. Hi. Don't bite. Don't bite. 
We well, don't Skylar. bite. We well, do don't. not bite. Hi, Freya. <laughs> Hi. Oh, now you now I'm playing with him. Now you want attention, huh? Uh, huh? You want attention now, huh? Say no. Don't play with him. Play with me. Oh no! Don't play with her. Play with my dirty butt. Now, uh, uh, uh. Well, we don't like bite. Him don't bite. <laughs> what did Ellie do? It wasn't Ellie. Oh. All right. So for dinner tonight, we're gonna do some uh, steaks on the grill. And then I stole this recipe, borrowed this recipe from my buddy Chris Pratt. His daughter made this for them. It's a substitute for hash browns, but you make it out of cauliflower. So what you need is 30 ounces of cauliflower, a whole onion, two eggs, salt, pepper, and whatever other seasonings you want to use. I don't recall that he put anything else in it besides that, but I'm going to add Parmesan cheese to ours just to kind of help the eggs kind of bind it all together. So you're going to kind of roughly chop up your... Um, cauliflower and you're gonna run it through a food processor. I don't have a food processor so we're gonna run it through our Ninja. Once you run all 30 ounces through the food processor or Ninja you're going to dump it into a towel or a tea towel or a napkin and you're gonna squeeze as much of the water out of it as you can then you're gonna blend together just kind of with a spatula or whatever the cauliflower, the onion, two eggs, your seasoning and in our instance we're doing cheese and then it gets fried in a pan that has a few tablespoons of butter and it's like three minutes on each side or five minutes on each side I have to go back and watch their video I'll put a link to their video where they made it the proper way uh, down below but I'll kind of show you what the end result looks like and uh, we'll see if uh, the kids like it all right sorry the dishwasher's running make sure that you don't skip the step with the cauliflower stuff where you're wringing all the water out now I threw my onion into the food processor with the cauliflower to kind of get it chopped up a little bit more so that's something you can do but make sure you wring it out because let's put it this way we started out with 30 ounces of cauliflower with all the water as much as I could wring out of it we're down to about 25 ounces 20 between 23 and 24 because I can't remember if I left the spatula in the bowl when I weighed it but um <clears throat> just make sure you wring out that's a lot of water and if you leave all that water in the cauliflower when you throw it in the pan to fry it same thing when you're making homemade hash browns if you don't wring out those hash browns you've got all this excess water and what happens is as they cook that water steams and boils and it causes your hash browns to come out mushy same thing with these cauliflower if you left all that water in there it's going to come out mushy whereas now you've got a lot of the water um, a lot of the excess water pushed out of it when they hit that hot pan they're going to fry and sizzle and crisp up a lot better so make Make sure you wring out your vegetables before you try and make this stuff. As far as moisture goes, you're going to throw two eggs in there. That's going to be plenty of moisture. Um, also, and the eggs are going to work as a binding agent. The Parmesan cheese I'm using is a dry Parmesan cheese. It's a very dry cheese. So if you're going to add cheese to these, make sure it's not a wet cheese or that's going to cause them not to uh, stick together. It's going to add moisture back. So if you're going to take that extra step, make sure you use a dry cheese. All right, now I added a tablespoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of chili powder, a two teaspoons of paprika, and now I'm gonna add a tablespoon of salt. I'm gonna mix this all together, add my egg and my cheese. Actually, I'm only gonna add a teaspoon of salt because that cheese has got plenty of salt in it. So I'm gonna do a teaspoon of salt um, and uh, two teaspoons of pepper, the two eggs, the cheese. I'm gonna mix that all together. Then you just form patties out of it. But once you like run it through the processor and you drain all the water out, you're gonna get this very like dry. If you've ever, if you live in the South, it's a grit consistency. Um, like before you cook grits, that's the consistency you're gonna get with this stuff. So keep that in mind, if that's the consistency you're looking for. You're gonna have some chump, chunks in it, but uh, you're looking for that grit consistency, very grainy consistency. Um, but let's go ahead and finish adding the stuff egg cracking tips for you. So, A, if you take two eggs and you crack them together, like take one egg and crack it with another egg, only one egg's gonna crack. That's one way to crack your eggs. Also, always crack it on a flat, hard surface. That's gonna help prevent you getting those little shards. If you crack it on the edge of your bowl and stuff like that, you're looking at getting those little shards and it breaking off and falling into whatever you're making. So hard, flat surface, the egg's gonna crack a lot more evenly. It's easier for you to pull apart. If you wanna learn how to crack with one hand, I can show you it's not that hard. It takes a little bit of practice, but uh, maybe one day. All right, 
I had to go back and double check their recipe because I forgot that he mentioned in the video she doubled the recipe. So for 30 ounces of cauliflower, it's six eggs. For 15 ounces, half the recipe, it's three eggs. I forgot that. I forgot they doubled it, that she doubled it in the, the recipe. So it's six eggs and this is what it should look like. It's kind of like... almost cake battery um, basically what you're frying is the eggs and stuff will kind of cook and solidify and that kind of binds it together this is gonna go you take four ounces of butter and you fry these up in four ounces of butter uh, and it's like five minutes per side but I've got to go put steaks on the grill first we'll come back and start these as well and uh, show you the finished product yeah I said you won't steal it no I said all right so there's the finished product that's the hash brown cauliflower and there's some steaks I grilled. I cut these up before I got a good shot of it. These are really good. They don't taste anything like cauliflower unless you got like maybe a big chunk of cauliflower. I did have a couple of those happen, but it, they're actually really good. They don't taste anything like, anything like cauliflower. And uh, I'm gonna hit some hot sauce on it because I like a little bit of hot sauce. But Kristen wants me to come up with an egg foo young recipe using that, so we'll have to see. So I hope you kind of enjoyed this. I know there wasn't a whole lot to it. I think we're gonna sit down and watch a movie maybe and uh or play some video games who knows what's gonna happen um i know pump fixed weird things cooking hope you enjoyed it love you guys till tomorrow